We wanted to share with you a little bit about our community, so we wanted to take a few minutes to do that. And here's my outrageous ask of all of you. I know many of you in this room are considering becoming part of this community. And if you're not, then my outrageous ask is, would you listen to this talk and be part of our word of mouth force that spreads amazing enlightened gossip about what we're doing here? Yes. yes. Okay, awesome. So let me tell you what we're doing here. I need... Oh, right, and I need the slide deck up. There we go. Okay, so Vista Mundo is more than just a community. It's a community for transformational leaders from all over the world. And it's, it's based around a core of a shared retreat center. And I'll say a little bit more about that as we go on. But I love coming up with ideas where, you know, as Roger said, money is an idea backed by confidence. And we all know in business, if you can solve a big problem for people, the bigger the problem you solve, the bigger the profit you make. And I would add to that, the greater your influence becomes and your ability to impact the world. So one of my passions is looking for ideas that solve multiple problems at once. And so all of these questions could be asked in relation to the community we're building. You know, influence is born of your relationships with the influential. And you become like the people you hang out with. How many of you have been uplifted by what we've been doing here in the last two days? I know, isn't it amazing? And as emerging thought leaders, we also need support in our own growth. One of the things we do at the UBC is provide safe spaces because as a leader, it's sometimes difficult to go into a room where people don't get what it's like to be an entrepreneur or a trainer or speaker or someone who's pushing out new ideas or new concepts in the world. That can be a lonely business. And we need a safe space we can come into where we can do constellation work or tapping or look at what's holding us back, whether it's our own past or our ancestral past. Um, so there's the, there it is in a nutshell. We need a safe space that we can create as leaders. Also, there's the, the idea of what is the lifestyle that we're living? As leaders, we need to inspire people. And um, one of my favorite quotes is a Pat Duckworth quote. As inspirational leaders, we need to be living an inspirational life. If people look at that and say, ah, he's brilliant, but look at the way he lives. He lives in an old closet, and he's not actually pursuing his dreams. That takes away your credibility and your credence around what you're doing. Also, we all need financial stability. I, you know, I was kind of loosely related to what does financial freedom mean. I love that Roger could define it in four quick words. So we need those investments that, that are high value assets that provide us with stable cash flow, not you know, hit and miss. Here it is, little boom, little bust, little boom, little bust. And we also need to avoid dormant assets. So how many of you have already invested in real estate in your life? There's usually a few people in every room, right? Mm -hmm. One of the challenges with real estate is it can have a high season and a low season, or it can have peaks and valleys. And that's often what frightens people away from investing in real estate. So we need to solve that problem when we're thinking about what we're doing. Also, we know if we're looking at something as an investment, location is everything. How many of you have heard the expression location, 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 right? So you need to be close to airports in Costa Rica. Ocean views make a significant difference, sometimes as much as doubling the value of an asset. Um, you also need um, high enough elevation for indoor, outdoor living. There's an expression in Costa Rica called rebounders. They're the people who think they want to live within um, four or five miles of a beach and they buy high-priced real estate down on the beach, and then usually within two or three years, they figure out that their lifestyle would be 10 times better if they lived between 3,000 and 4,000 feet elevation, because the climate is always perfect at those elevations. And so in Costa Rica, it's actually a, a, an ethic here to shoot for indoor-outdoor living, and it's only the people at certain eleva elevations that can do it. Um, also, as those of us who host events know, event hosting is complex, right? You guys have seen all the little problems we've been rolling with here. 
It's because it's our first time ever, ever hosting in this facility. And as much as you can have your checklist of all the things to ask, no one on our team thought to ask, would water come in around the tops of these roofs, right? Yeah. And, um, and so it's awesome that we've got a facility that rolls with us. But when you can come up with um, models that allow you to stabilize how you do your business and be hosting in the same place over and over again, everything um, becomes a lot simpler. Finding event locations is time consuming and costly and high-end retreats are the most expensive to host. If you do a survey of Costa Rica, you'll see that high-end retreat centers like this are not cheap. Reinventing your model every year involves risk, it involves time, it involves money. Also, most facilities don't provide you any kind of marketing support. We came in here, they don't have any kind of a list to announce to anyone in, in this region what's going on, let alone anyone in North America or Europe, what's going on at this facility. Um, so we looked at Vistamundo as a solution to all of these problems. And let me tell you what Vistamundo is in a nutshell first, and then I'll speak to the problems individually or the challenges that Vistamundo addresses. But here's the opportunity in a nutshell. Those who are participating in the Vistamundo community would essentially buy a lot, and we've negotiated with the owner of the development. He's holding all of the lots for us, and they're well below market value. So we have that agreement with him. It gets renegotiated uh, every six months, but for now, all of the lots are held for us. You would build rentals, plus you can build a home of your own. Pam and I actually own two lots and have reserves on a couple of lots as well. All of our rental properties are going on one of them. The houses are going on another because we want privacy and separation around what we're building. You'd also get uh, a 25-year lease on days in the retreat center that we're building, um, which will be opening in the fall of 2020. So you could be hosting your advanced events down here in Costa Rica. So your retreat hosting then really simplifies because you're always doing your advanced events at the same location. And because all of us are committed to hosting retreats, and we will be selling fractionals in the retreat center as well to get more people down here hosting retreats, now, we have a community with year-round rentals. So anyone who owns the guest houses has that opportunity. I'll talk about each of these points in detail in a moment. You also get to live in paradise. How many of you think this is spectacular, right? And you have a learning environment for your own growth because we have the opportunity to attend each other's re advanced retreats, not just retreats, but advanced retreats because Costa Rica is generally where people do the bottom of their marketing funnel. Right? And you get to live with amazing, influential neighbors. How many of you would like to have Partha Nandi or uh, Roger Salam as neighbors? Right? So let's talk first about why Costa Rica. So first of all, there's the bin business benefit of Costa Rica. You know, what did Dan Millman, Lisa Nichols, Jack Canfield, Michael Beckwith, Kim Kardashian all have in common? They're all hosting in Costa Rica. This is the place people are going to for their advanced retreats. I'll talk more about that why in a moment. Also, high-end retreats give you the high-end credibility to your business. You start to look like the high-end companies when you have something in your bo the bottom of your marketing funnel that's that sophisticated. Also, Costa Rica is known for its longevity. It's one of the highest longevity countries in the world. In fact, Guanacaste Peninsula, which is just west of us, is a blue zone. You heard um, Parthenandi talking about that yesterday in his talk. Blue zone means the World Healthcare Organization recognizes it as one of the highest longevity zones in the world. And many people in Costa Rica believe that actually much of Rural Costa Rica is in fact a blue zone. Guanacaste is the only officially designated because the capital taints the statistics. But for people living outside of the capital, you do see very similar characteristics where there's quite a few centigenarians in the population of Costa Rica living and contributing with their families. They're not in homes. They still live in their family communities. One of the things we're seeing about longevity is it's not just about le healthy lifestyle, which is in abundance here. It's so easy to live healthy here. But it's also about are you still living with a community that you're a high contribution to? And so we're making uh, Vista Mundo a part of that because as people live there, at least for part of the year, I mean, how many of you are nomadic, right? 
So it's probably going to be a stopping ground for many of us. We might not live there all year, but it's a place to retreat to and reconnect with our own health and our own reason for being here and, um, and reconnect with our own longevity because I'm not planning to go any time before 150, just the way I'm thinking. Uh, if you want to know what healthcare is like in Costa Rica, they rank in the top 25 in the world under the World Healthcare Organizations. That's almost double the U.S.'s ranking, by the way. They have incredible healthcare here. Their um, medical tourism is their second highest interest uh, industry next to tourism in this country because the healthcare is so good here. Quite a few English-speaking medical professionals that run clinics completely aimed at medical tourism. Um, I've gotten tons of dentistry done in San Ramon, for example. Uh, as much dentistry as would have cost me probably getting close to about $20,000 in Canada now. And the total bill in Costa Rica has been under 800, or no, sorry, $3,800 for that amount of dentistry. So probably a quarter of what it would have cost me in Canada. Costa Rica is also known for um, really spectacular landscapes. Landscapes like this exist all over this country. There's waterfalls everywhere. There's volcanoes that you can go up and see everywhere. Vista Mundo's not near any active volcanoes, though, before any of you ask. I am, in my earliest life, a, uh, not only a biologist, but I used to teach meteorology. So I did research the environmental risks for where this piece of land is thoroughly. And it is about as minimal as you can get for environmental risks. Uh, Costa Rica actually had first time ever hurricane last year what touched down on the East Coast and we had zero damage or impact in the Vista Mundo community. So we had one tiny little bank sloughed over. But um, it's about as safe as you can get. It's also got, it's also known for perfect climate. As long as you're not right down at the coast where it gets stinking hot, similar to South Florida or South Texas, um, it's got um, always between uh, 72 and uh, 88 degrees Fahrenheit in this country, which would be about 20 to 30 degrees Celsius for the Europeans and Canadians in the room. It's also known for having a very stable government of all the Latin American uh, countries. Costa Rica has one of the most stable, most forward-thinking governments. They have one of the least amounts of debt. They have a lot of very um, you know, I mean, they have the typical political drama that any country has. Um, but when you look at their fiscal policies, they have some of the wisest fiscal policies of any of the Latin American countries. They're also uh, considered one of the safer Latin American countries. Their crime rates are about consistent with the United States. There's still bad neighborhoods here that you shouldn't go into, just like I wouldn't go into East Detroit without a man with me. There's parts of the capital that are probably not the safest to go into. Certainly this region here, west of the capital, is ex incredibly safe. I've never met a Costa Rican that wouldn't help me. They're also known for how frickin' friendly they are. How many of you met Cesar yet? Isn't he a honey? <laughs> so, yeah. So Cesar is typical of the Costa Rican culture. They're one of the kindest, um, most heartfelt people you will ever meet. And um, if they can't help you, it's not for lack of wanting to help you. In fact, one of the, the jokes people often make around Costa Ricans is that, that um, the biggest challenge you have is they hate to say no. So they will never tell you when they don't know. They're trying so hard to help you. They're, they're like trying to invent an answer because they want to help you so badly. So that's actually a cute little quirk to be aware of, that if they're sounding uncertain, go get someone else to help you because they don't want to tell you they don't know the answer. So why Vista Mundo then specifically our vision for Vista Mundo is that it's a place where you're free to discover your best self. Because this is a convergence of all of these problems it solves. We're basing it around shared values of both consciousness and eco-sustainable living. So you heard about a couple of the technologies that we're looking at, seeing if we can bring into the community. We're also looking at numerous other uh, eco-sustainable technologies because we'd like to be a, uh, a demonstration community for the world of what a community can be. We're not going to make any of that mandatory, so like we're not going to force people to spend thousands of dollars they don't have on technologies they don't have, but we'll look at ways to make it easy. Basically our attitude is to foster collaboration. So we're going to have different members of the community researching different types of things and finding cost-effective ways to bring it in. The other really cool thing about Costa Rica is we're encouraging a lot of our owners to provide 
their advanced retreats at significantly lower cost to other members of the community. So this will not only be as assistance in marketing, because most people have a few spare spots at their events at the end that they could fill, it also means all of us get to attend amazing workshops. Like, can you imagine if you could go to a whole weekend of Family Constellations or one of Partha Nandi's health, health workshops, what that could mean for you in your life? So where is it located? Basically, if you look across the valley, if we're standing on the other side, a lot of you have seen Poas, and then there's a ridge. Vista Mundo's on the other side of that ridge facing the Pacific Ocean. So um, I know it's a little, a little bit uh, lighter interference here, but on the extreme right of the screen, as you're facing the screen, would be the San Jose Airport. If you follow the Pan American Highway, which is the no northernmost of the advanced highways, Vista Mundo is almost exactly between the airport and the coast. Um, we're about 15 minutes south of San Ramon, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, we tell people it's about an hour to the airport because traffic is right now an issue, but it's actually 18 miles as the crow flies. And um, that section of highway between the airport and San Ramon is the next section in this country to become a four lane. And we saw what happened to Atenas when the four lane came down to Atenas. It, it turned into an amazing tourist destination and revitalized the community, um, really brought in a lot of tourists and a lot of opportunity into this region. So that's expected to start happening in the Palmares San Ramon area. As soon as that highway becomes a, a, a four lane, it's going to revitalize the area in a new way. Um, as the crow flies, we're 18 miles from the coast, so that's what you can expect for your views. Um, I touched on this a little bit, but why we chose this specific elevation is this is the perfect elevation for indoor-outdoor living. Below 2,000 uh, feet elevation, you're going to get very high daytime temperatures and you need air conditioning. And I didn't want to esca escape central heating in Canada and be stuck indoors with air conditioning all day in Costa Rica. I love this kind of environment where you've got your windows open and it's perfect. Above 4,000 feet, you can get cool daytime temperatures. <coughs> Costa Rica's that microclimate. So when you go too high, it's also too cool. Um, our property at Vista Mundo averages 31 feet um, above sea level. It ranges between 2,800 feet and 3,600 feet, depending on which of the lots you buy. Some of them are higher than others. The other things about this location, it's got one of the best accesses to the, to the airport. There's literally thousands of retreat centers in Costa Rica. Many of them are more than three hours from the airport, many of them six to seven hours, or you have to go to a secondary airport to get them. In other words, you fly to San, San Jose and then you fly to Capos and then you drive for an hour, which when we surveyed our people in the EBC, they overwhelmingly said it's got to be easy. We don't want to fly people into the capital and then they've got to drive or fly for six more hours to get to where they're going, especially if we're trying to bring people in from Europe or South America or Canada. So that you can get a direct flight to San Jose and you're at Vista Mundo within the hour, once the highway's four lanes, significantly less than an hour. Um, also, the ability to get high-speed internet is a showstopper for most people who run training companies. And up to the access, uh, the entrance of this subdivision is wired with fiber optic, which isn't available in a lot of areas in Costa Rica. So we will be able to get the highest speeds available in Costa Rica at the Vista Mundo community. It's also got spectacular ocean views. That's an example of the view from Vista Mundo. I'm so sorry that it's so hazy on the side because there's so much light interference here. But the ocean's right below you. And with the exception of one lot, um, which Roger generos generously agreed to buy, so Roger's one of our community members now, every lot in the place has a spectacular ocean view. Roger's going to have to build a two-story house to get his ocean view. And he's like, I like two-story. I'll take that lot. <laughs> so. Um, so there's, there's the view that we're looking at, and I'm sorry it's um, the light interference is having you not see it, but the blue at the top there is the ocean. So, um, so here's what it looks like from an investment standpoint. So first of all, you get to buy a lot at below market value. And a lot of people always ask me what land's worth. They hear about all this cheap land in Costa Rica. Yes, there's lots of cheap land in Costa Rica. It's the same as anywhere in the world, right? Like if you tried to buy an acre of land in Manhattan if such a thing existed, 
um, you would be paying $27 million an acre. You can get, when you go three hours from Manhattan, you can get one acre for a quarter million dollars. If you're, um, similarly in Canada, if you're within an hour of Toronto, uh, you can get a one acre lot for close to a quarter million dollars. If you move out to Sturgeon Falls, which is three hours away, you can get a one acre lot for 90,000, right? San Jose's no different, right? There's, uh, if you're in the Central Valley, close to the capital, easy access to the airport, you're probably looking at somewhere between 250 and 300,000 for an acre. You can find smaller lots for cheaper, but you wouldn't be finding the big generous lots. Um, if you're way out in Guanacaste Peninsula, or if you're way down in the south, there, are land, there is land for 70,000 or less an acre. So it's, it's the same principle you see anywhere in the world. So I'm just showing this so people understand to compare apples to apples. Here's the neighborhood, what it looks like. The top of the screen, actually that arrow is a little bit off. It should be actually north, north is more to the upper left corner. Um, the, the top of the screen is the highest elevation, so 3,000 feet at the, um, at the highest edge of the screen. The lowest elevation lots are at the bottom of the screen. More spectacular views at the higher elevations, more cozy, intimate lots. And so we actually, in the brochures that we passed around, there's little um, sheets that talk about the different types of lots so you can get a feel for them if you want to have a look. The services included are we will be building a community pool so there is infrastructure money built into the price of every lot. The presence of a pool um, immediately increases the value of rentals by 10 to 20 percent because when tourists come down here even if there's no retreat center everybody wants a pool or ocean if they're coming to Costa Rica. Interestingly though oceanfront does not has no difference in value between, from poolside in Costa Rica. In other words, uh, the same unit, whether it's ocean or having a pool, will rent for the same amount of money in Costa Rica. Um, it's also going to have a gathering area and a site of a future restaurant. We're just in discussions with a couple people about setting up a, a restaurant that will be able to do different types of diet, keto, uh, paleo, uh, vegan, vegetarian, so there'll be a wide array of healthy options available. There will also be a barbecue area near the pool area that people can book out just as an added benefit to give incentive to renters or that community uh, members can use. Let's talk about the business benefit then. So most training companies spend more than 30 hours per event figuring out where they're hosting the event. That's real time and money and frustration because you can see the first time you come to an event, you know, you don't have your checklist down because you don't know things like will rain come in the top of the windows. Creating a, rep a repetitive model saves time, money, and most importantly, stress. Your team is not scrambling when breakdown happens because they're used to that facility. So the retreat center then is going to be uh, a shared facility. We'll be fractionalizing the days in the retreat center. If you, not if, when you buy a lot, I'm going to be bold. When you buy a lot, you're going to get either two days of high season or four days of green season every year. Uh, to host your own advanced events. When you look at the cost of hosting a high event, high end event in Costa Rica, we did a survey of about 10 retreat centers within an hour radius of the, of the uh, STO airport. And, um, and then we also did a survey of retreat centers that were even further, believe it or not. And for some reason that we can't fathom, the ones further out actually charge more. Go figure. I think it's because they have fewer people booking them. It's the only way they can survive. And somehow they convince people that that's okay to have people drive the extra four hours. But the average cost of hosting a four-day retreat in Costa Rica is about $1,000 per day per participant. So a 12-person retreat, four days, would cost about $12,000. 20-person retreat is about $20,000. So that's not insignificant and yet there's lots of people in the high end of the industry doing it. So with Vistamundo you can host high end retreats for a fraction of that cost. Whoops, I did something wrong. So the other thing I want to talk about is the lifestyle. So when you become a member of Vistamundo, how does your life change? Well the first thing is we get to attend each other's events. 
And I know as leaders, having those safe spaces where we can go to more advanced retreats really makes a difference. So what's that worth to you, to be able to, to attend other people's advanced retreats? We're also, as a community, getting together and talking about a number of community-based projects. So Pam and I aren't owning all of this. We're creating the space that different community members can step into and say, hey, let's do some different cool projects here, and we'll see who in the community wants to participate. So for example, some of our community members are talking about, wouldn't it be cool if we had a health center with treatment rooms available? Parth is one of the people in that conversation. We're also talking about, wouldn't it be cool if we could set up a market garden? Because we're all going to be planting mango trees and avocado trees. We're already out there planting some of them, actually. We want to have mixed horticulture. So some of the people who are already in the community are saying, you know, it wouldn't be hard to get some of the locals to come in and harvest all those for us. And we could actually set up our own little market garden that people could go to once a week. We've got other members that are really interested in water conservation and have cool techniques like this. How do you hide a water holding tank so that we can conserve water from the green season when it um, tends to rain more into the dry season? We also um, have people talking about uh, community projects such as the community meditation garden. This is one I'm spearheading. One of my dreams my whole life has been to set up a meditation garden that people could come to and do their own work, including their forgiveness work. So one of the incentives of this community that we built in, um, Mark Copel, the owner of this subdivision, has one lot that's unbuildable. And so when all the lots have sold, he's agreed to sell me that lot for under $20,000. Uh, and that's a reward for me helping me put this community together. And I'll get to build my meditation garden, which will be my give back to the community for anyone. It'll be right next door to the lot that's um, currently having the retreat center on it. So we're also looking at really innovative green approaches. And again, we're not going to force anyone to do this. We're just going to make it ridiculously uh, beneficial for everyone too. In other words, it, we're going to make sure it makes sense for people to participate in this. So we're looking at cutting edge building approaches, cutting edge lighting and electric. You heard about um, those two projects on the first evening. We're also looking at bringing in all kinds of sustainability options like water holding and um, looking at um, having food grown right on the site so that everybody has, can eat locally if they want. We're also doing eco-friendly to the maximum extent possible. So here's the kicker for me, because I study influence, and I know that you can't make yourself famous and you can't make yourself influential. You can only give influence to other people, and they can give it back to you. So the depth of your relationships with highly influential people is what dictates your own influence. That's the principle the EBC was created on. So if you could actually choose your neighbors, who would you pick? And truthfully, Vistamundo is, first and foremost, my unashamed attempt to choose my neighbors. Because I need to do my own work. I'm as flawed as the rest of them, right? And so I want to be hanging out with people like this. So here's who's already in the community. Partha and Callie Nandy. You all met Partha this weekend. His wife, Callie, is freaking awesome. I'm so sorry about the light in interference there. But they've got an award-winning syndicated television show that currently has a, a monthly viewership of 95 million. I thought it was 80 million, but it's 95 million. He's also an international best-selling author. Um, you can check out his website there. Tina Dietz is in the neighborhood, uh, international best-selling author, and she's considered the top of the industry in audio branding, in doing audibles and, and uh, voice and uh, audible audio branding in general. Dr. Shonda Perrin, she's been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. She's won six Emmy Awards as a documentary maker. Her husband, Terry DePerrin, is the owner of Good People Goods. I don't know how many of you got to try the little Good Fat Bars. That's one of his signature products in Good People Goods. Yeah. So, yeah. They're for high keto diets, these bars, and they're the only bar of their kind on the neighborhood. They're taking off and going crazy. Um, and he's got other signature products that are all around let's live an outrageously healthy and eco friendly life. Um, Harrison Klein and Marbeth Dunn, um, one of our most um, awesome couples in the EBC. Uh, Marbeth's a radio host with hundreds of thousands of followers. Harrison Klein runs the Masters Gathering, 
when I launched my first book and Harrison agreed to do mailing for it, Harrison's list is so big, his list is in the millions. Um, he mailed early and he didn't tell me and we weren't ready. And I woke up and my book was already a bestseller in five countries just because Harrison had mailed for me. And I was like, it was funny because I had a friend over and I was like freaking out because I'm like, oh my God, the website's not done. This is horrible, horrible. And my friend had to stop me and say, Teresa, you're an international best-selling author in five countries. Just stop for a moment, you know? And then I realized, okay, wait a second, that's a good problem to have that he mailed early. But that's, that's the power of Harrison's list. He's not only got a huge list, he's got a very warm list. His following loves him that much. Um, Tracy and Dave Rebchuk, um, huge in the world of branding. Sorry, I went too fast. Um, Tracy's also an international speaker and a number one international best-selling author. Dave's the genius behind the woman. They run their whole company together, but just a beautiful couple. Nicola Grace, she's known as the mission mentor. She's huge in Australia and just decided to relocate. She'll be one of our permanent residents in Vista Mundo. Um, also has a massive list and a massive following and does most of her work on the internet actually. And our beloved Roger Salam uh, is one of our newest members of the <coughs> community. Um, when Roger saw what we, we, we were doing, he leaped pretty fast. And of course, um, yours truly, Pam and I, own two of the lots we're sharing. So here's what it looks like if you buy. There's a price list in your thing, so if you can't see the prices here, you'll know what the prices are. <coughs> We've got tiered pricing agreed to with the development owner, so uh, the lot prices change after so many lots are purchased. So buy sooner, there's a slight incentive to buying sooner. So in year one, you would buy a lot and your net worth would immediately increase by about $100,000 because you now own an asset that's worth more than what you paid for it. This is the agreement we have with Mark because the average development takes 10 years to develop uh, in Costa Rica and he got that if he partnered with us probably the entire development would be sold within four years. We're at two and a half years and we're already at 60% of the lots gone. We're expecting actually by Christmas that all of the lots will be gone, maybe sooner because we've got two retreats down here in the next month. They might, truthfully, they're probably all going to be gone by the end of May. And so the one thing I want to say about this is if this would be the reason you would buy, please don't. I'm just asking people in integrity that please don't buy a lot and flip it because that's not what Vista Mundo's about. So I'm just going to ask and please don't encourage someone to do that because that's not what this is for. You do need to be a member of this community to buy though. We're not at this time opening this up to the public. Year two, 2019, we're encouraging all of the lot owners to, buy, to build at least their first two guest houses that would cost you Roughly in the neighborhood of $120,000 uh, to do that. Sorry, that should be one hundred and twenty k to build your first two guest houses. That, yeah, yeah, sorry. That would be outrageously good. That's a conservative price. And some of you may have heard the stories that we've got people like Gary Stewart bringing ceiling fans and other people have brought taps down in their luggage. Pam and I estimate at this point that we've saved almost $18,000 on the construction of our first two just by having friends bring stuff down in their luggage because it's the finishing features here that are expensive. Labor's cheap, tiles are cheap, um, most of what goes into a construction is cheap. Taps and lights and ceiling fans are double to triple what you'd pay in the United States. So. It's because of customs. Anything that's imported in, the government taxes at sometimes up to 200% tax. On, right? But if it comes in in people's luggage, no tax. So we've been taking advantage of that and bringing stuff in in people's luggage. So at that point, in the absence of a retreat center, so worst case scenario, something happened and the retreat center never got built. This is what your investment would look like. You would then have rental income from that and here's what the rental income looks like without a retreat center. So you could expect a two bedroom, two bath guest, guest house to rent for about $1,000 a week. So you've built two of those, sorry. And in Costa Rica, most properties will rent out 18 to 20 weeks a year. So that's generally what they consider to be here high season, December to the end of April. 
So two guest houses would bring in roughly $36,000 a year. So your lots plus what you've spent on your guest houses, you're into the whole investment for about 240,000. At that point, you're at 15% return on investment from your rental income. And those are fairly conservative estimates of what you'd expect. So each of these lots though, depending on the size of the lot, can fit between six to 12 guest houses. Still in the absence of a retreat center, you could make an, uh, an additional $60,000 guest house at this point, because now the land is paid for. I factored the land into the ROI on the first one. Now the land is paid for. Each additional guest house at these numbers would give you about a 30% return on investment. And so most people are going to be building it up slowly over time. Like the first two, the first year, they'll use some of that rental income to build the next guest houses. So over time, you'll be building up your guest houses. Enter the retreat center, which is scheduled to open in December 2020. And the reason we're pushing back the opening of the retreat center a little bit is because we need guest houses for people to stay in and we've got to give people time to build them. And so we're, we're bringing up a staged launch here because we can't expect everyone to build 12 guest houses right out of the gate, right? So enter the retreat center. Um, and now this means that there will be year-round retreats. We're going to be targeting especially incentives for people to do green season retreats. You'll notice we're making the days in the green season worth half the price of the days in the high season. That's because we want people to come down and host in the green season. That's one of the major draws in the off season is people doing yoga retreats, business retreats, they do them all year here. Now once that happens, you're now looking at um, rent uh, at significantly higher rates because you remember the, the dollars I gave you for what it costs to host retreats? Rental incomes can now edge upwards. And sometimes as much as two to three times the norm of what things rent out for. For example, that villa across the way rents significantly higher than most villas in Costa Rica because they know they're next to Barron's Resort and they can capitalize on the fact that retreats are being hosted here. So we'll also be selling fractionals in the retreat center to increase the number of retreats uh, running year round. So what are you looking at? So a guest house that costs 60,000 to build, renting 40 weeks a year, now at $1,200 a week, that's now an 80% return on investment. You guys following what I'm, I'm say, saying here? And this is possible when we work together to achieve this. So this is not a Pam and I own everything and we're laughing all the way to the bank. Trust me, we'll be laughing all the way to the bank because we're going to own two of the lots. This is a we all work together and everybody benefits. So here's the bonus. When you buy a lot, we've built in pricing that you're going to get a fractional, which means for 25 years, you'll own a retreat, a lease on the retreat center for the 100 person room. That's a thousand person meeting room, significantly bigger than just about any other retreat center you'll find in the country. Most of them are this size. The maximum you can do is about 20 people. You said a thousand square feet. A thousand square feet. So theater style, that means you can do 100 people. Um, in, a, in rounds, you can do about 40 to 50 in a 1,000 square foot meeting room. So you can either choose two days of high season, which would be December to the end of April, or you can choose four days of green season. And that's built into the pricing of your lot. Also, you have the opportunity to buy additional days as a lot owner at 70% off what we'll be offering them to the open market. The pricing for all of that is in your little brochures if you want to look at what it is. So also we've got an agreement with uh, the developer to offer payment plans. So you can do up to four payments over 12 months or up to six payments over 12 months. If you want a payment plan, you're adding 10% onto the price of the lots. Your other option is we have a financing expert in the room for those of the people who are living in the United States. And you can always have a conversation with her because she can get um, incredible financing opportunities. So when I look at something, I look at ROI from every perspective. So what we're really talking about here is ROI not only in dollars, but in a simpler, more profitable business model for each of your training and branding businesses. 
when you want to sell something, anything you want to sell is easier when you have a group together and they're all seeing it once because the social proof that exists merely by the presence of that group makes a difference to how easy it is to sell. So no matter what your business is, doing events is a, a model that makes sense, right? In other words, when I walk out on stage in front of a thousand people, they don't even need to know that I'm a number one international best-selling author in seven countries. I'm standing in front of a thousand people. That's all they need to know. And I'm instantly worth money. You get environmental sustainability with this model. You get to step into your own longevity. You get a lifestyle that works for you and you can design your lifestyle to be in Costa Rica when you want to be in Costa Rica. You get to hang out with kick-ass people and have fun that can increase your happiness. You get great weather. This is what green season looks like, although I've been told this, because we're at the top of a hill and we're on the wetter side of the Central Valley, this is a little higher rainfall than you might expect in some areas. But even in green season, you get spectacular mornings and beautiful evenings, and just two out of three days, you get a rain shower in the afternoon. You get to step into abundant, amazing health. How many of you are eating a better diet than you normally do since you got in country, right? Are you noticing that, how you feel? I'm like, I'm a little annoyed at having to go back to Canada next week, because I, I, can, I can't eat the cheese or wheat when I'm in continental North America. In Canada, the States, I can't eat it. I'm down here, I'm pigging out on pizza. I've gained 10 pounds, because I can eat the wheat and I can eat the cheese down here. Because nothing's GMO'd, and most stuff, especially if you're buying it in the local stores, are to an organic standard. The, a lot of the farmers here are like little far, har, hobby farms. There, there do exist the big industrial farms here too, but most of what you buy in the smaller stores are um, organically grown. And um, it's not because they uh, desire an organic standard, they just think it's a stupid waste of time to spray chemicals on all your stuff when you can just throw out the few ones that are bad. Like this is such an abundant country that way. I love going in the grocery, the little grocery store in the corner and seeing eggs that are all different sizes and colors mm -hmm. and, and you know shapes because I know those were hatched in somebody's backyard and they're probably less than a day old. Mm -hmm. You simply cannot get that in Canada or the United States. Also you get that opportunity to step into personal transformation with the option to do each other's um, workshops. Most importantly to me, you get to hang with really influential people. What's it mean when your next door neighbor has a television show that reaches 90 million people? What does that mean to you? And what does it mean when the woman down the street has been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize and sometimes has Facebook post reaches of 40 million? What does it mean when those people are hanging out in the community all the time? And most importantly, we get this awesome, kick-ass community to just be with. And the lifestyle that most of us only ever dream of. You know, it's, um, I've been joking lately, it's, and it's not a joke, that I set up my lifestyle as a business owner in Canada, because Canada has all these tax incentives for business owners. And um, it used to feel like the best freedom in my life, because I've lived tax-free for almost 10 years now as a business owner. And then I moved to Costa Rica last winter, and I realized in Canada, all of your tax benefits, all of your health care, everything is tied to residency, which is distinct from citizenship. And if you're outside the country more than 186 calendar days in one year, they take away your residency. You're still a citizen, and you can gain your residency back, but they take away your residency status, which means you start getting letters from all these government departments mm -hmm. saying we, you owe them money or you've lost your health care. And uh, for me, the health care is no biggie because I can get way better health care here in Costa Rica than I can access in Canada, and Canada has one of the best health care systems in the world. But the big one for me is I suddenly realized that the structure of my company means that I would lose all those benefits that they give to business owners, and I would now own, owe the Canadian government the money that I live on as someone who's financially free. And uh, suddenly my freedom is feeling like a prison. And so my next goal is to restructure my finances, which Vista Mundo is a big part of, so that I can now truly be not only financially free, but geographically free. Because as much as I'm Canadian through and through, and I love my country, but I hate winter, 
and um, and I don't want to not have to worry about going to someone's event in July because it means I have to spend December in Canada. I don't want to have to do that math anymore. So I'm just declaring to you guys that by next year I'm going to have that worked out. <laughs> Because I'm staying in Costa Rica, baby. It's just too beautiful down here. So the one thing I want to say is, if you're looking for perfection, don't invest. I love messy, because messy means you're inventing something new. And here's the thing, and this is the one thing I really want you to get. That was a baby macaw, by the way. And this is an adult macaw. Perfection takes some time to get to. But I borrowed one of Roger's favorite sayings, good things come to those who wait, but only what's left over from those who jump at the early opportunities. And I really do believe that, that the early adopters are those who are willing to stand in a bit of a mess and stand with us and figure it out. And those of you who know me know I am one of the most frickin' tenacious people on the planet. I will figure this out. And this will be the best idea I ever had in my life because I've got brilliant people all around me helping me figure it out. So this is your opportunity to create your own sustainable future. And I'm, can I be really bold? Yeah. I just want to be really bold. Because some of you are like, oh, I'll gossip about this. This sounds really cool. But here's the truth. I want you guys as neighbors. I really do want that. And we have all kinds of people considering this based on sharing lots. They're like, nope, quarter million dollars too much for me, but I can take a quarter of an acre and a quarter lot and build two guest houses, and it's still a freaking awesome investment, right? Like Tracy Repchuk and Harrison Klein and Marbeth Dunn, those two couples are sharing a lot based on an agreement that they're planting a hedge down the middle, and they each own uh, A class shares and B class shares, and if one of them wants to sell their half of the lot, they sell those shares and the shares attached to the piece of the lot that they own. That's how simple they made it. Every lot in this community is going to be owned by a corporation. We've already set that up. So you're buying a corporation that owns a lot. That gives you all the rights of a Costa Rican citizen and makes it uber easy for you. So with that, thank you for listening to our project. I'm uh, really excited about what we're creating here.